It's the regular season finale, and the Broncos hope to end the year with a win over division rival Kansas City. Every day we have with these guys, you know, I mean, you kind of cherish it because it's a special group. It'll be a matchup between two young QBs, Patrick Mahomes against Paxton Lynch. You got to go out there and prove yourself and show that you can, you know, they can count on you and they can trust you. Meanwhile, the Denver defense looks to finish the season tops in the league. Our defense is playing, you know, lights out, been playing lights out all year long. And uh, we still have an opportunity to build on that. It's New Year's Eve. Time to get the party started. The Broncos TV pregame show starts right now. Saving the best for last. The Broncos hope so as they welcome the Kansas City Chiefs to the Mile High City. For by far and away the coldest game of the season. It's about 16 degrees right now. And with a win, the Broncos would lock up a winning record at home for the sixth year in a row and head into the offseason with a little bit of momentum. Hello and Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us for the Broncos TV pregame show presented by Microsoft. I'm Phil Milani. The Broncos and Chiefs will meet for the 115th time today. The Broncos looking to snap a four-game losing streak against its division rival. We have a great show lined up for you today with a couple of special guests joining us. But first, let's hear from the team as the guys made their way inside the stadium. It's cold, man. Another cold one in Denver. Another uh, Broncos-Kansas City matchup. Uh, beat the Chiefs. Just trying to win this game. Start my new year off right. Oh, no, it's game day. We ready to go. We ready to play. That's all it is to it. KC okay, today, man. Last game of the season. Breaking the new year right. The guys are ready to go here coming into the stadium. Now we're pleased to be joined by former Bronco All-Pro left tackle Ryan Clady. Ryan, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're scheduled to uh, be honored here today. Officially retired as a Bronco yesterday. What was yesterday like for you? Man, it was fun. I was hanging out at the facility and, uh, you know, hanging out with a few of my old teammates. Uh, and it was just fun. It's an honor to be here. You know, it's top class organization. You know, I, I was so blessed to be able to play here. Are uh, you looking forward to today? They're going to honor you here out, out on the field. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I didn't realize how cold it was going to be. <laughs> I've been in California for the last six months, so uh, this is a shockwave to the system. Uh, I got to talk to you a little bit yesterday. Uh, you got your 10-month-old son with you today, Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, so I'm excited. <laughs> It's going to be his first and last game for a while. So. <laughs> uh, what do you remember from your time with the Broncos? Uh, Four-time Pro Bowler, uh, two-time first-team All-Pro. Uh, man, I just remember, you know, a, a bunch of great teammates that I've had over the years, and, you know, I'm still brothers with um, a lot of those guys. You know, you know some, of the, some of the great years, like 2011, we led the league in rushing and uh, recruited Peyton to come here. And, you know, it, we had a great success, so I, I can't be uh, – more than happy with my time here. Is that what it's about? It's really about the relationship. You yeah, have that's with all. Guys. That's all you're gonna get from this game at the end of it is relationships and hopefully financial success. And so you've been living out in California. Get a chance to be a dad now. Yeah, uh, yeah. You've been enjoying life after football. Yeah, I've been working on the golf game, uh, some <laughs> yoga, working out, so uh, trying to lose some weight. So. Awesome. It's been nice to relax. All right. Well, we're looking forward to uh, seeing you out here on the field today. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, Ryan. Thanks for having me. All right. Let's send things over to Matt Boyer now, who's standing by with head coach Vance Joseph. Coach, season finale against the Chiefs. Yes. You've got Paxton. He's up. Obviously, winning trumps everything. But in your mind, which boxes does he need to check in order to have a successful start? Well, the first box, just to play football. I mean, he's, he's had a chance to play uh, two and a half quarters this year. He needs he needs more play time. So that's the first box. The second box is just to play winning football. You know, I mean, as simple as that. Go out there, execute, put us in good plays, be good with your ball placement, and take care of the football. Sonny will wrap your first season as head coach. What are some of the big takeaways for you in your first season as you as you head to the end of week 17? It goes by fast. You know, um, you've got limited games to have success. It goes by fast. And, you know, every every little detail matters, you know, between winning and losing. So it wasn't a year we wanted to uh, have, but the guys uh, worked every week. Their belief never went away. And this team's close. Coach, best of luck against the Chiefs. Thank you very much. Phil, we will send it back to you on the field. Thank you very much, Matt. Now we're here with Broncos senior reporter Andrew Mason for his matchup of the game. And Mace, that's Paxton Lynch versus that chief secondary. Yeah, it's chief secondary that struggled even with all of its players. And of course, 
with the Chiefs having wrapped up the AFC West and being locked into the number four seed, we won't see their full complement of players in the secondary, so it might look a little bit different, but still the, the, the challenge for Paxton Lynch is going to be the same. Get comfortable and get into a rhythm out there. That's something he wasn't able to do against Oakland in his last start, so I imagine we'll see maybe some short control passing, maybe some the type of stuff that we saw back in the third quarter of the first preseason game against Chicago when he was able to get in a rhythm with some short passes, some slants, some crosses, maybe get the screen game going as well, allow Paxton Lynch to get comfortable, especially because you know he's coming off that ankle injury, so maybe his mobility won't, will not be all the way there just yet. So if you can get the short passing game going and get him into a rhythm, that'll allow him to find his groove. Yeah, Paxton Lynch, 9 of 14 for 41 yards in that game against the Raiders before injuring his ankle. And, uh, Mace, in that first meeting with the Broncos and Chiefs, Chiefs source five turnovers. How are they able to do that? Well, I mean, some of it you had you, know, you had some errant throws, of course, and you had a, a, a fumble from Jamal Charles early in that game. So some of it was opportunistic defense, some of it was throws going in the wrong direction. You know, Kansas City caused a lot of problems that game. Some of it was the Broncos' own mistakes. You hope to avoid those today. And Mace, we're going to see on the other side Patrick Mahomes uh, from the Chiefs. Yeah, and he was very impressive in the preseason, made a lot of wow throws. You know, the Chiefs have raved about how he's come along. He's learned the offense really fast, and certainly he is the quarterback of the future in Kansas City. So a preview of probably some future Broncos Chiefs games with Patrick Mahomes out here today. Yeah, and that's uh, after Alex Smith had a very good season uh, for the Chiefs, as you mentioned, wrapped up back-to-back -back AFC West titles. Mace, thank you so much. You can find Andrew Mason on Orange and Blue 760 Monday through Friday for first and 10 at 10. That's every weekday, 10 to noon. You can also follow him on Twitter at Mace Denver or check out his mailbag on DenverBroncos.com. Now let's hear from the Broncos starting quarterback who's looking to make the most of this opportunity. You know, anytime I get a chance to come out here and work with these guys and play with these guys, it feels good. So, you know, I've wanted to play with them all season, but uh, just had a couple nagging injuries that have kept me out of it. But uh, like I said, I'm excited for this opportunity. I'm going to go make the most of it. You got to go out there and prove yourself and show that you can, you know, they can count on you and they can trust you. So uh, that's how I've approached every start I've got and every opportunity to play. So uh, just because, you know, we're not going to make the playoffs or it's the last game of the season, it's not going to change my mindset. All right, we're back here, field level, and pleased to be joined by Ryan Goddard, the Colorado Prep Coach of the Year, and also Max Borgi, the Gold Helmet winner. Uh, Coach, let's uh, start with you. Uh, how does it feel to be back here at Sports Authority Field after uh, winning the state title? You know, it's, it's an amazing place. Um, you know, obviously, it's, it's a great experience. I'm glad that we get to bring our team up today for the you know the mile high salute and, and all that stuff for the high school salute, but. Uh, just, just incredible. You know, it's just incredible. Uh, Max, it must bring back a lot of memories for you here. Uh, you had a huge game, 247 yards, three touchdowns, uh, leading Pomona to the state title. What does it feel like uh, to be back here? Feels good. Um, I'm excited to be here as my team, my, my coaches. Um, I'm excited to be out here. Um, can't, it can't be a place like this, especially um, watching the Broncos win today. <laughs> uh, what did that feel like for you to have such a big game, especially coming off the year prior to that when you were injured? Um, it meant a lot. Uh, going out my senior year with a championship win, you, you can't beat that. Uh, and what's next for you? I know that you're heading uh, to Washington State, right? Washington State, January 3rd, <laughs> so a whole other chapter of my life. I'm excited. Oh, you're going to enroll early then? Yep. Oh, awesome. Yeah, uh, how early. much of a head start do you think that could give you uh, heading out there early? I think that'll give me a big advantage. Um, going in early, playing spring ball, having that under my belt, that'll give me an advantage over all the other kids, so I'm excited. Well, awesome, awesome. And Coach, uh, how do you follow up uh, Pueblo South's first title win ever in football? How do you follow that up? Well, I'm not sure how to follow Max up right now. I mean, what a great kid. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think our, our program's in a good spot. We're, you know, we got good kids in our program, and, you know, we're just looking to, you know, keep getting better each and every day. And, um, you know, just excited to be their coach and, and thankful, for, thankful for that opportunity. All right, guys, well, congrats on all your success, and thanks for coming on the show with us today. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for having us. All right, we'll send it over to uh, Matt Boyer once again, who's standing by inside the Broncos locker room. Thanks, Phil. Welcome inside the Broncos locker room. The equipment staff behind me making their last-minute adjustments before today's game. Now, we've heard it all throughout this week. The Broncos' big goal on defense, finishing first in total team defense. And they've got a little bit of groundwork to make up. They trail the Vikings currently by just four yards. And the Vikings play the Chicago Bears this week. But as we heard from guys like Vaughn Miller, just the opportunity to hit the field in Week 17 is motivation enough for the Broncos. And I still got an opportunity. I got 10 sacks right now. I mean, I got opportunity to build on that. 
Um, got to still our defense is playing. You know, lights out. I've been playing lights out all year long, and uh, we still have an opportunity to build on that and still finish high defensively, despite other all despite all the other adversities and challenges that we've been through this year. So. That's what, I mean, that's what keeps me going. Now, we don't know what Vaughn's snap count is going to look like today. The coaching staff has said all week it's going to be important to get the young guys playing time, but not at the expense of winning the football game. If Vaughn finds himself along that line of scrimmage enough times today, he is just two and a half sacks away from the NFL's top 50 career sack list. So if he can break into there, that would just be another milestone on an already great career. Keep it tuned to DenverBroncos.com. After today's game, Phil and myself will be right here inside the Broncos locker room. We'll also have Paxton Lynch, Vaughn Miller, and head coach Vance Joseph at the podium. But for now, Phil, we'll send it back to you on the field. Thank you very much, Matt. We're now here with Broncos insider Steve Atwater. We're freezing out here. Hey, man, it's all right, man. We, 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 the weather's been great all year, so we can't really exactly. complain. Exactly. Mental toughness. Uh, Steve, we're here with your keys to the game, uh, number one. Key number one is uh, our, our team can't underestimate the talent of this Kansas City Chiefs backup players. And we know a lot of the backups will be playing for the Chiefs today. The Broncos still have to have the mentality that they're going out and playing against their starters because, as you know, Everybody's getting paid, and they can make plays as well. So uh, we've got to make sure we don't under underestimate. Exactly. The Chiefs wrapped up back-to-back -back AFC West titles. Probably won't see much of their three Pro Bowlers today. Steve, key number two. Key number two, Paxton Lynch must protect the football. Now, Paxton Lynch uh, comes out here and plays a day and doesn't make protecting the football a priority. I think anything positive that he does will be severely minimized. On the other hand, if he comes out and has a great game, I think it will go a long way to him building some faith and confidence in him. Uh, going into the offseason. Well, he certainly protected the ball in his first start this season. The two quarters he played against the Raiders earlier this year, no interceptions, no fumbles in that game. Steve, key number three. Key number three is that we pressure uh, the rookie quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, but not show the pressure. Now, Patrick Mahomes is a very alert and smart quarterback. He's very accurate throwing the ball, but I think if we can disguise those coverages, he may not be able to recognize it in time to make adjustments, and that would be very good for the Broncos defense. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, a 10 overall selection for the Chiefs this year. He played pretty well in the preseason. Four touchdowns, no interceptions. Steve, thank you very much. Thank Those you, are the Steve Atwater's keys to the game. <laughs> and Steve, one thing that everybody knows is that this team will never be quite the same. Always a few changes every offseason. So the Broncos heading into this one know it's the last time they'll all be playing together. I mean, it's always tough, you know, uh, to know that it's going to be a new team next year. Um, now, the extent of that, I'm not sure what the extent of that is, but, you know, um, you know, a lot of guys won't be back, unfortunately, but, you know, that, that's every year in the NFL, um, unfortunately, but, you know, I know a lot of guys are landing their feet. It's tough, um, you know, we have a great, great locker room, great group of guys, and um, some guys that I've been around my whole, uh, you know, four years here, um, and it's tough, you know, knowing that, you know, some of that can change. I just take it by year by year because, uh, like you said, it's always different faces, different teams. You know, we put in different work every year. You always got this guy you're going to put in work with. So, you know, come to work next year and um, see what faces you got. But it's going to be the same thing, the same goals. is put the work in and trying to get back to a championship. All right, we're back here now, field level with Matt Boyer. You're warm enough here? Yeah, you said save the best for last. I've been waiting yeah, out yeah. in the cold, just you know, just getting the arm ready, getting getting warmed up. Matt, a couple of players today could reach uh, milestones, a thousand yards uh, for both Demarius Thomas and C.J. Anderson. Let's talk about C.J. Sure. though for a little bit here. That would be the first time in his career getting a thousand yard rushing. Not only that, first time since 2013. No, Sean Moreno was the last one to do it for the Broncos. So I think we've heard from a lot of the guys in the locker room. This is a big milestone to get C.J. to because it's not representative of just CJ. It's a great accomplishment in his career, of course, but the offensive line, the quarterback play, the wideouts blocking for CJ on the edges. All of these guys want to make sure he gets to that level just because it'll give such a good feeling to that entire offense going into 2018. Yeah, and they're really CJ allowed to do this because he stayed healthy this right. year, wouldn't you say, Matt? Yeah, well, we heard about him, you know, riding the bike, <laughs> new fitness <laughs> regimen, dropping some weight. I think he's very, very proud of just the complete body of work that he's been able to put towards this season. Last year with, obviously, the knee injury, he was very upset. We saw how upset he was all the way through the end of that 2016 season season though so to have to have this type of end to 2017 means a lot yeah the Broncos have been really committed to the run 13th in the league in rushing and for CJ Anderson it would be quite the milestone especially considering like Matt said what happened last season
I had surgery last year, so uh, you know, coming coming away with a thousand for this season, coming off knee surgery, I think is a uh, accomplish a successful season. You know, staying healthy, that helps too. So, uh, you know, we got one game to do it. I know big boys want me to get it. We want to get it. Um, I think that's a that's a positive. That's a, you know, it's a positive in our season. Okay, Matt, it's time to put a bow on our final pregame show of the year. Make the most of your opportunity, I think, is going to be my final key for this game. I think you're going to see a lot of guys that we haven't seen all season. D'Angelo Henderson, expect to see him. DeMonte Thomas back in that secondary. I think all of these guys, and of course Paxton Lynch, need to put some good stuff on film to give that front office for the Broncos a lot to think about as they move into 2018. I'm going to say uh, stay focused on what you can, can control. I mean, there's going to be some changes this offseason. We know that happens every single year. Just focus on what you can, and if the Broncos can win this game, game they'll be 500 in division yep. they'll have a winning home record that'll be big heading into the moment with heading into the off season with a little bit of momentum it's freezing out yeah, here can I we can go barely talk. <laughs> <laughs> all right well that's going to do it for us i'd like to thank everybody up in the production booth Absolutely. everybody behind the scenes that makes this show possible so thank you very much and that's going to do it for the last time this season this has been the broncos tv pregame show presented by microsoft happy new year